Rebellionism. So we are doing exercise 7.6. Number eight. Okay, so the first question says simplify. And we have sine negative theta plus cos 360 plus theta multiplied by cos theta minus 90 and then plus cos theta okay my first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to list what quadrants these are in so this would be in the fourth quadrant just remember it's negative theta 360 plus first quadrant theta minus 90 would be in the fourth quadrant plus cocoa all right and why because we've got the 90 degrees there okay so sine in the fourth is negative so this would be negative sine theta uh, cos in the first is positive so this would be plus cos theta then cos in the fourth is positive but it changes to sine because of the cocoa, so this is sine theta. Then cos, this theta here is in the first quadrant, so cos in the first is positive, so this becomes plus cos theta. Okay, so over here we've got this, uh, this bracket here, which I can just drop, and we've got minus sine theta plus cos theta. In the next bracket, we've got sine theta plus cos theta. Now, grade 11s, you've seen this before. Okay, this is a binomial multiplied by binomial. All right, so we're going to do first with firsts, outers, inners, and then lasts. So the first with the first is going to give us negative sine squared theta because sine times sine is sine squared. Let's do the outers. That and that will give us negative sine theta cos theta. Let's do the inners. We'll get plus sine theta cos theta. Yes, grade 11s, I know it would be cos theta sine theta, but I'm changing it around to be sine theta cos theta just so that it fits with this one. And it's exactly the same. You can flip them like that. It'll be the same thing. Then from here to here, that will give us plus cos squared theta okay now as you can see that these are like terms so these will fall away we have minus sine theta cos theta plus sine theta cos theta so they will cancel and what we left with is negative sine squared theta plus cos squared theta Okay, I just want to see here how far they want it to be taken. Okay, so what we can do is we can just leave it like that. I mean, minus sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is perfect. But what they're doing in the back is they're just saying cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. It's exactly the same thing. You could have left your answer just over there. Okay, right. Going on to question... B. Okay. We've got sine 90 minus x, sine 90 plus x, all over. sine 90 minus sine x sine 90 plus sine x okay so 90 minus is in the first quadrant plus 
cocoa. I know that because of the 90. 90 plus is in the second quadrant plus cocoa. Again, because of the 90. Now, this sine 90 over here, this is a special angle. Okay, same thing with this one. We're not acting on this 90 like what we did here, 90 plus something or 90 minus something. It's just purely 90 degrees. Okay, so we know that that is a special angle. This is a first quadrant and that is in first quadrant. So let's start reducing these things. So sine in the first is positive, but it changes to cos or coco. So this becomes cos x multiplied by sine in the second is positive, but it changes to cos because of coco. So this is cos x over. Now, special angle for this, you guys should know that sine of 90 now is 1 minus x. And then sine of 90 again is 1 plus x. All right. Then, uh, sorry, sine x. My bad, sine x and sine x. Okay, so we've got that. Now, up at the top, I get cos squared x because cos times cos is cos squared. Then, at the bottom, at the bottom, I've got a difference of two squares. So, I'm going to do firsts and only lasts because if I do the outers and the inners, they will cancel. So I'm just going to be bothered with the first and the last. So the first and the first gives me one. The outers will give me, or the lasts will give me minus sine x times plus sine x will give me minus sine squared x. Okay, now, you remember your square identity, where it says that we have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. I can manipulate the square identity to get two different things. For the one, I can get the sine squared on its own. So sine squared theta would be equal to, take the cos squared to the other side, and we get one minus cos squared theta. Another one that we could get is getting the cos squared on its own. So cos squared theta would be equal to one minus sine squared theta. <coughs> And if you have a look here, we have this 1 minus sine squared, which is this, 1 minus sine squared. We can see that's going to be equal to cos squared. So that is what I'm going to change this to. So we've got the top, cos squared, over. This is now going to change to, one. Uh, the 1 minus sine squared is going to change to cos squared. So we get cos squared x. This cancels with that, and we are left with 1. All right. And I think that is the answer. All right. Going on to question C. Okay, question C. We've got cos 114 minus sine 90 minus theta all over sine 410 plus cos minus theta. Okay, so this is in the second quadrant. 90 minus is in the first quadrant, but plus coco because of the 90. 410, we're not sure. We'll, we'll deal with that one in a second. Then minus theta, that is in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Now, if you can remember, how do we deal with angles bigger than 360? Well, I take that angle, 410, and I subtract 360 from it until I get an angle that is between 0 and 360, and we get this 50. So that is what I'm going to reduce here. I'm just going to say 360 minus to get what we want, okay? Okay, so, cos in the second is negative. And then how do we reduce an angle in the second? It's 180 minus this thing. So 180 minus 140 gives us 40 degrees. 
Then sine in the first is positive, but then it changes to cos because of coco. So this is minus cos theta over. Remember that this 410 is now going to change to 50. So we get sine 50. Then cos in the fourth is positive. So this will just be plus cos theta. Okay, so up at the top, I can see I can take out a negative sign as common, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take out the negative, and I'm left with cos 40 plus cos theta over sine 50 plus cos theta. Okay, so now... You guys can see that we've got some kind of similarity here with the top and the bottom. I've got a cos theta, cos theta, a plus, a plus. Now we get a cos 40 and a sine 50. And you're probably saying, yeah, but those aren't the same. But they are the same. Because if, for example, like this one over here, if I say 90 minus 40, what do we get there? We get 50 degrees, which is this angle coming out here. Okay, and I can tell that these two would be co-functions because all I did was just add their two angles. So 40 plus 50 gives me 90. Therefore, I know I can do stuff like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this top one. I'm going to change the cos to be a sine by using this. Okay, so this would become minus cos 90 minus 40 plus cos theta all over sine 50 plus cos theta. So 90 minus is in the first and it becomes coco. Okay, so 90 minus is 50 and that changes to sine. So we get here minus sine, sorry, in bracket minus sine 50 plus cos 30 uh, theta over sine 50 plus cos theta. Now you can see this entire bracket will cancel with that one and we are left with minus 1. Okay, going on to question uh, D. Uh, what do we have here? We've got cos theta minus 19 multiplied by sine theta minus 118 plus cos 360 plus theta over sine 90 minus theta. All right, so theta minus 90, that's going to be in the fourth quadrant, plus cocoa, because it's the 90. Theta minus 180, that's in the third quadrant, 360 plus, first quadrant, then we've got 90 minus is in the second quadrant plus cocoa because of the 90. Okay, so um, cos in the fourth, positive, but it changes to sine. So this is sine theta multiplied by sine in the third is negative. So this becomes negative sine theta plus Cos in the first is positive, so this becomes cos theta. Sine in the second is positive, but it changes to cos, so this becomes cos theta. All right, so what does this give us? This gives us minus sine squared theta, and then that will just give us plus one. Okay, and the question was to simplify. Now, 
You remember our square identities that we have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And from this I got two more. I could say that cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta, or I could say that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta. And if we have a look here, I can just rearrange this to be 1 minus sine squared theta, right? I've just flipped them around. That 1 minus sine squared theta is going to be cos squared theta. So this is equal to cos squared theta. Okay. Right, going on to question E. Probably need a new page for this one. So question E, we've got cos 90 plus theta, cos minus theta, sine minus theta, all over minus 90 10 360 minus and then we've got cos theta all right so 90 plus is in the second quadrant plus cocoa because of the 90 minus theta is in the fourth minus theta is in the fourth Theta minus 90 is in the fourth plus cocoa. 360 minus is in the fourth and then theta is just in the first. Okay, so cos in the second is negative, but the cos changes to sine. So we get sine theta, negative sine theta, guys. Okay, cos in the fourth is positive, so this is just cos theta. Sine in the fourth is negative, so that's negative sine theta. Sine in the fourth is negative, but it changes to cos because of cocoa, so negative cos theta. Tan in the fourth is negative, so negative tan theta. And then cos in the first is just positive, so this is just cos theta. All right, now you know what I like to do? I like to get rid of my signs, and I'm not talking about the trig ratio sign, I'm talking about the signs as in pluses or minuses. So at the top, we've got a negative times a positive gives us a negative, times another negative gives us a positive. So at the top, we have a positive. At the bottom, we have a negative times a negative is a positive, times another positive is a positive. So a positive divided by a positive, the whole thing is positive. So now I can ignore those signs. Okay, and I can just cancel or simplify on that. So, first of all, is there anything to cancel? Well, we can cancel this cos with that cos. All right. Then, that times that is going to give us sine squared. Theta over. Over here, we've got cos theta times, now this is going to become sine theta over cos theta change the tan okay that will cancel with that and we left with sine squared theta over sine theta and the one sine theta will cancel with that one and we are left with sine theta and that's the final answer for that one all right question f the last one for this exercise guys question f we've got one minus sine squared 180 plus x all over sine 
1 minus cos squared 180 plus x. Okay, so let's see what quadrants we've got here. So 180 plus is in the third. 180 plus is in the third. Okay, so that's just 1 minus. Now, sine in the third is negative. But because it's squared, it will become positive. So this will be sine squared x over 1. Now, cos in the third is also negative. But because of the squared, it'll make it a positive. A positive and a negative is just a negative. And we've got cos minus cos, excuse me, minus cos squared x. All right, so from our square identities, we've got sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. We can get two things from this. We can either get sine squared theta is equal to one minus cos squared theta, or we could get cos squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta. And that is the one here, the one minus the cos squared. One minus cos squared, I'm going to change to sine squared. So we get here 1 minus sine squared theta of x over sine squared x, because I changed it to this one. That and that will give me 1, so we're left with 1 minus 1, and that gives us 0. All right, guys, that's your walkthrough for this exercise. I hope it helped.